Hi guys, welcome to another Kemikaze creation video. Uh, since we were here last time, I've uh, made a few little changes. As you'll know, I replaced the uh, to pick 31 carby on the uh, little 1500 Beetle, 1500 single port. And uh, since then, I've gone back to the original filter as well. I've learned a lot about uh, these filters and, um, and the design of these uh, engines and how they're supposed to work. And I had a comment from a uh, VW enthusiast uh, that suggested that it was the worst thing I could do to put that uh, sports pod filter on there. And doing a bit of research and a bit of looking at this original filter, I, I understand uh, his comments most definitely. Uh, and moral of this channel or the uh, theme of this channel is learning and sharing so uh, great to learn from others and uh, share that information with you so I put this brand new PIC31 carb on here uh, the old one was okay uh, always had a flat spot in it at low revs and in hindsight from what I've learnt now I probably could have tuned that in but uh, you know, carbies do get old and worn out and the linkages get um, worn and things like that. Uh, so I was very happy to buy this new carby. I bought it off a company in Australia called Just Campers. Uh, I think it was, uh, you know, around the 450 mark, 450 Australian dollars uh, for the carby. And it's an exact replacement for the original carby. So I'll put the oil uh, filled uh, filter back on and uh, I'll talk a little bit about that filter design and why I've gone back to that uh, right now. So this filter is actually an oil filled filter and originally I tried just taking the top off and I couldn't do that. Uh, getting to those rear clips, there's two of these clips on the rear as well. Uh, it was near impossible and uh, this hinge area in the way here or spring setup didn't allow me to take it off. And the irony of it is up under here there is one screw. Uh, you can see this screw just up in here remove that one screw and the whole filter lifts off. Now I was quite surprised when I took it off the amount of oil in it and from uh, doing the research found out there an oil uh, filled filter. So there's a line in around about here um, that you run the oil in. In the top part here which releases from the bottom it's uh, uh, supposed to be a horsehair filter so this unit comes down inside of here and it's uh, filled with horsehair and basically the advice was to degrease it give it a clean and whack it back in so uh, no aftermarket parts for that um, and uh, the oil you're using here is basically the same as the engine oil and I did an oil change after I put the carby on that was one of the things I wanted to do hadn't done an oil change on this since I bought it um, so I had a little bit of oil left over um, to put back in that filter and any excess runs back down into the filler area through this, this line. So it's working very well. Now, the main thing that was described to me about this filter is in there, there is a, what's called a ram tube. So um, the air comes in obviously through here um, runs the oil stops any dust and that getting uh, up into the intake uh, collects all that dust and holds it and uh, it comes up through some some holes around the outer side and up into the top so up around here there is actually a tube that's sitting you know probably uh, 100 mil 125 mil from the top of the carby and it was described to me like a ram tube. So you've got that air as being rammed down into the carby from that height. Now I like the idea of that, uh, being that I've got a, um, a forced induction car sitting uh, just over next to me. I understand that, uh, that increased airflow into the engine. And it was described to me as if I have a flat spot, that's probably one of the reasons. But also, 
uh, the tuning of the carby. So I'll show you a little bit about that, especially on my old carby. So this is the old uh, Solex uh, carby. You can see there it's a PIC 30. Uh, and it's a little bit different in design to the new one. Um, down here we have our, um, our mixture screw um, for your air fuel ratio. And on the new one, it actually has an idle screw as well. Now I've uh, grown up with different types of carbies and I've only ever used this screw here um, to adjust the idle. And on, on these, uh, what was suggested to me was when it's when it's actually running uh, nicely and warmed up, this pin here should be just sitting free of this rocker arm. So just sitting free of it so it's not interfering with it. And at that point, um, you can adjust, which is on the new carbine I'll show you, the, um, uh, the screw that allows the air to come in. So it gives you the right amount of air at idle um, to have it running quite nicely. So once you get your air nicely, you then adjust your mixture. So allowing that fuel to mix with the air. So I'll show you that on the new carby and what I did. It took me a few goes to get it uh, running right but it's running pretty good now. It really hasn't got that flat spot it used to have. Uh, just a little bit, so I'm gonna do a little bit of fine tuning on it, but I found it quite easy to set up. So you see here, the way I've got this lever sitting at the moment is as if the car is uh, warm and idling. And you'll notice I've probably got a little bit far off there, but you notice that uh, what I'd call an idle screw, and isn't really, um, is just sitting off the main rocker arm. So this is imagining if it's quite warm now and sitting and idling, this is sort of the position it would be sitting in. This is this arm that you see, the rocker arm there, that is associated with the choke. Um, so the choke's on the other side of the carby and it's all controlled electronically. It's an electronic choke. We come down a little bit, you'll see down the bottom you'll see a large screw and a small screw. So over in here is a large screw, which I believe is called the idle control screw. And then down the bottom, you see the mixture screw. So the advice I had from uh, watching a few videos and uh, never having done this was to get it running, get it really nice and warm uh, and then adjust your idle control so that you can get it down as slow as you can. About 800 revs they recommend for these engines. I like it idling a little bit faster and the old fella that I watched do this like he's idling around the 1,000 revs. So they haven't got to wait so much from uh, the mark to head off. And I've got mine running at about 1,000 revs now. So screw that out basically to get enough air um, to have it running at about 800 to 1,000 revs. And then next you'll adjust your mixture screw. So the little one right down the bottom of the screen is the mixture screw. So then adjust that, you know, quarter of a turn at a time, in or out, depending on the position it's in at the time, to get it so it's idling as high as you can get it with that uh, idle control screw where it is. So then you aim to get it idling as high as you can get it with that mixture screw. So mixing the fuel with the air. And once it's warm and it's idling as high as you can get it, you then go back and screw that idle control screw, uh, the top one, so that you bring it back down to that 800 to 1000. So this is all done with it warm. Um, usually your rocker arm up here on the choke should be pretty much released and uh, use the idle control to bring the, uh, the revs down to about 800 to 1,000. Use your mixture screw to get it as high as you can, which means it's running as freely as it can. And then bring your revs back down with that idle control screw. Now I've done that 
and uh, she's running pretty nice now. Uh, best it has been, off the mark. Start it, start it cold and pretty much I can drive it straight away down the driveway where I used to have to warm it up a fair bit. Uh, now start it cold and basically can drive it off the mark, allowing that choke to do what it needs to do. And ch between gears it's really good. And uh, coming down to corners where you drop your revs down and then want to take off again is really good. So that's how I adjusted my carby. Uh, only using those couple of screws to get it running nice and right. So guys, that's the little Beetle, the little uh, 1500 single port with a pick three, pick two, um, Solex carby. Uh, it's an aftermarket carby. Uh, I, I, I doubt it's original. It'll be a uh, remanufactured carby, but absolutely beautiful, like a great little carby on this engine. The car is running the best it's ever run with that new carby, and I've fixed up a lot of those... Uh, those fuel leaks. I do want to have a look at some of the fuel lines. I do want to have a look at replacing the mechanical fuel pump and moving the fuel pump up the front of the car, going more electronic, and maybe replacing some of the fuel lines, getting more uh, steel lines in there instead of the rubber lines to um, just secure that uh, that fuel in the engine. There's no leaks now, no weeps. It's really good. The car be sealed really well onto the engine. And I've uh, fixed up those, those few rubber lines that were giving me some problems. Uh, and it's quite nice. So I feel reasonably confident. Some of you may have noticed if you look up in the uh, boot lid, I've got that uh, fire suppression unit running around the inside in there. That's a pressurized standalone unit. I bought online, it's about 250 bucks. Just gives me that security. Uh, when I am driving it, if it does get a fire, that thing will put it out instantly. It melts uh, the tube at the point of the fire and uh, high pressure chemical is sprayed into the engine bay and the fire is put out instantly. So that gives me a little bit of security as well, but I really don't want it to happen and <laughs> damage this engine. Anyway, guys, Hope the video is helpful on that uh, little Pick 2 carby running the standard now air cleaner and why I'm running that air cleaner and it's running quite nicely and uh, the tune. Hope you guys uh, find it useful and if you do, hit that like and subscribe and uh, I'll catch you in the next video.